Hey what is up everyone this is Abhishek from Motion Nations and welcome back to another exciting After Effects tutorial. In this video we are gonna take a look how to create this YouTube channel intro animation in After Effects without using any third party plugin. So you can use this animation for your websites, Instagram, Twitter and pretty much anything that you want for. So let's begin with the tutorial. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes in design, animation, film production and much more. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields. So you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities and do the work you love. The best thing about Skillshare is that you can find classes from your favorite creators. For example, I wanted to learn some character animation and I absolutely love the work from Jake Bartlett. Well guess what, he has some amazing classes on motion design and in fact I am taking one of his classes on character animation which is very helpful for me. Also Skillshare is more affordable than most of the learning platforms out there. An annual subscription on Skillshare is less than $10 a month. So if you want to take some professional classes from expert and you want to learn some new skill, you can sign up on Skillshare using the link in the description below. And the first 500 people to sign up using the link will get 2 months of subscription for free. Alright now I'm in After Effects so let's create a new composition. Let's call this main and you can set the width and height to 1920 by 1080 frame rate 30 fps and duration 10 seconds just click on ok now let's create a new solid so let's go to layer new solid or in case you want to use my this quick new script you can download it from the description below it's completely free so you can just click on this s button to create a solid layer so now let's just call it pg for background and change its color to something like this gray color and now let's select the rounded rectangle tool and we will draw a rectangle shape something like this just align it in the center of this composition and you can play around with the roundness of this rectangle by going into the rectangle and then go to the rectangle path and over here you can change the roundness to whatever you want so i think let's go with 25 yeah this looks good also make sure you have fill set to none so just simply click on this fill and then set it to none then let's change the stroke and increase it to something around maybe 2 and yeah this looks good so let's just place it in the center of this composition and now let's just quickly animate it by adding a trim path to it now let's go to the trim part and add a keyframe for end animation so in the beginning we want the animation to be start from zero so here you can see that it starts from 0 then goes to 100 also let's change the offset to something like negative 85 so that it kind of starts from the middle of the search bar so something like this and let's just select the keyframes press f9 to ease them then go to the graph editor and you can change the curve to look something like this and if i play back here you can see that we have this kind of animation so let's just do one more thing let's rename it to something like search bar and after that let's create new rectangle and just simply double click on the rounded rectangle tool and it will create a rectangle of the full composition size make sure it has the fill property on and we do not need any kind of stroke for it now let's just position it by pressing the p key so also make sure its anchor point is on the bottom left corner so let's you can use the pen anchor tool to move it at the bottom corner or you can use the move anchor point script something like this and let's just pick this and place it somewhere around here so i think negative 390 by 700 so this looks good now let's press r on the keyboard to reveal the rotation property so in the beginning we want the rotation to be negative 90 so that it's completely straight and it's out of the frame and after that we can set its value to something like negative 30 so let's just duplicate it by pressing ctrl d 
and then apply fill effect to this layer so you can search for fill and let's just quickly drop it on top of this layer and after that just select the bottom layer which is shape layer 1 then use the arrow keys to move it little bit below something like this so that we have this kind of animation now let's just offset these animations but before that let's select both the layers press u on the keyboard then select the keyframes press f9 to easy ease them then go to the graph editor and we can play around with the graph curve so let's change it to look something like this like this then go out of the graph editor and if we play back here you can see that we have this kind of animation now in order to improve this animation we can offset the top layer so let's just offset it by three frames so i'm pressing page down key three times and here you can see that you can offset the layer by three frames so if i play back here you can see that we have this kind of animation so let's just quickly select all the keyframes and while holding the alt or option key on mac just simply drag these keyframes so that we have this nice smooth easing at the end and maybe if you think that these are like too close to each other so you can just select them and place it a little bit above something like this so just simply select both of these then right click and click on pre-compose and just name it transition click on ok now duplicate it by pressing ctrl d then hit r on the keyboard for rotation and set the rotation to 180 degree so that we have the transition happening on both the opposite ends something like this now let's just quickly add our logo over here so you can use whatever logo you want i am using the youtube logo also you will need this cursor file so i will provide a link in the description below from where you can download this so let's just drag the logo file into this composition and over here we can see that our logo and the search bar is placed on top of each other so let's just quickly resize the logo something like this maybe let's go to 80 percent so this looks good and we can maybe pre-compose it so that we can change the logo later on if needed so let's just use the arrow key to move the youtube logo above so let's just precisely move them something like this and here you can see that we have the youtube search bar and the youtube logo on top of it now let's just quickly add our text which we want to display so you can type whatever you want so i'm going to type youtube.com slash motion nations you can type your channel name or your website and anything you want let's just place it in the center of this composition by using the align tool so everything is in position now let's do one more thing just simply select the search bar layer and then duplicate it by pressing ctrl d we are going to rename it to mask and on this layer just press u on the keyboard and delete these keyframes we do not need any kind of animation on this one also select the layer and set the fill to white color and just lower down the stroke to zero then just simply place it on top of the text and then press ctrl d once again to duplicate it and just simply select the second copy and place it on top of the logo now select the second copy of which is on top of this logo and we are going to press s on the keyboard for scale and before scaling it up we can move the anchor point over here so you can use the pen anchor tool so to move it something like this or you can use the script and after that just simply scale the value of the y axis to something like this so that it overlaps the whole the base of the logo now we are going to animate both of these text and logo so before that let's select the logo layer and set its track mat to alpha inverted in case you are not able to see the track mat option just simply click on this button we can do the same thing for this one but for this one we are going to use the alpha mask and like this now let's just quickly animate both of this by pressing selecting both of them by pressing p on the keyboard for position let's add a keyframe and then simply move them 
down below like this and if i play back here you can see that we have this kind of animation but maybe we can tweak it by using the graph editor so let's make it something like this and let's play around with its position so that it reveals when the animation begins something like this maybe we can make them a little bit faster so this looks good for now yeah so this is fine now let's create the animated background so in order to do that just simply select the rectangle tool and you can draw any rectangle shape something like this and let's go to the rectangle and under the rectangle path make sure to uncheck the size property so let's change it to something like 10 and 40 then select the rectangle and press ctrl d on the keyboard to duplicate it and in the second one let's change the values to 40 and in the second one let's set it to 10 so that we have this kind of look so let's select all of these then press r on the keyboard for rotation and we can rotate it to something like 45 degree so that we have this little x mark now let's add repeater to this and just go to add then click on repeater and under repeater you can set the copies to whatever you want so for this example let's go with 10 under the transform properties for repeater let's change the x offset to something like 200 and then just simply click on this and press ctrl d to duplicate it and then go to the transform of the repeater to and set the x value to 0 and the y value to 200 so that we have this kind of grid and let's just place it somewhere around here like this and let's just quickly rename it to x and place it below all of these layers somewhere around here then you can press t on the keyboard for opacity and let's lower it down to something like maybe 10 yeah 10 looks good now press p on the keyboard for position and let's add a keyframe in the beginning so we want the animation to start from somewhere around here and as the time pass we can move the pointer to something like this so if i play back here you can see that now the background is also animating if it's too fast you can move the keyframe further apart so that it slows down a little bit also in the beginning we want the transition to be just appear from fade in and let's change the opacity from 0 to 10 and if i play back here you can see that we have this nice animation so this is how you guys can create this animation now the last part is to add the cursor so let's just quickly drop the cursor into this composition and we can scale it down so let's go with 9 or maybe 8 percent then press r on the keyboard for rotation and you can rotate it down so let's go with negative 30 and also we'll will apply fill effect to this so let's change its color to white and let's quickly animate it so we in the beginning we want our cursor to be over here so let's press p on the keyboard for position and as the time pass we want our cursor to move to the search bar and you can use the pen tool so just simply click on it and if you click on this start point you can see that we have this handle so you can make a nice curved path for it so if i play back here you can see that now our cursor is following that curved path maybe it's not too good because if we have not done the easing so press f9 to add some easies to it then just quickly animate the cursor so you can play around with the graph editor so i think this looks good for now and you can play around with the speed of the cursor so this looks good for me also let's just place it below the transition so that it is not appearing in the beginning so you can play back and maybe you can change the timing of the cursor to make it like a little bit slower so if i play back here you can see that now our cursor appears so this looks good for now and let's just quickly animate the click so in order to do that just press s on the keyboard for scale then add a keyframe and then press one frame ahead by pressing page down key then set the 
scale to 6% and then again page down and set it back to 8% so here you can see that we have the click animation so when the cursor clicks we want a circle animation to happen so let's just quickly grab the ellipse tool and just draw a circle something like this and maybe you can scale it down so let's scale it something like this and we can place it where this cursor is so let's animate the scale from zero and after that and let's change the value to something so that it occupies the whole composition like this and you can press f9 to easy ease them then go to the graph editor and just play around with the curves so just move them further apart if you think that it's too fast just trim it up so if i play back here you can see that the animation is happening and when the cursor clicks a uh, circle transition happens so this is how you guys can create the youtube intro for your channel and you can pretty much use it for your websites or anything you want so just simply replace the logo with your website and just simply change the text to your website name and everything will be same so this is how you can create the animation also i have provided a free download link for the project file and there is a green screen footage with no text in it so that you can place your text over here and just use it in your videos so that's how you guys can create this animation and if you guys have any query or question you can ask me in the comments below so that's it for this video this is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one